Hello and welcome to this week's edition of our live Bible study. We are so pleased you have joined us. Make sure you've got your Bible or preferably you've got a copy of the study that we're doing at the moment, which is one of our 40 minute studies, Ignite Your Passion for God. We started last week, that was the first session, so we are just part way through the first uh, week. I'll give you a quick recap, uh, then we'll pray and then we will get straight on. But don't forget, all you need is a pencil, uh, we loved also to hear your comments. Make sure you put comments in the, um, in the feed as well and we'll get back to you uh, with any questions that you have or any comments later on. So this is what we looked at last week. We began uh, uh, looking at this whole subject of igniting our passion for God uh, because of, there's such apathy in the Christian world. And uh, we looked at uh, the example of Solomon from 1 Kings chapter 3. And Solomon, uh, his heart, he loved the Lord and he walked the way of his father David, but there was a problem with Solomon, wasn't there? He, mm. he held to foreign wives, and uh, the Lord had warned Israel about loving women um, uh, from foreign nations. And uh, can you remember how many wives was it that Solomon had? He had 700 and 300. So 700 <laughs> wives and 300 concubines. He had an awful lot of women, a lot of yeah. foreign women, and he held to them in love. And God warned that if, if they were to do that, then they, the women would turn their heart away from God. And his heart away. His, well, Israel's heart. Yeah. And sadly, yeah. um, Solomon um, disobeyed the Lord, and uh, that's just exactly what happened. And, and I think, the Lord was angry with him. Yeah, him. it was a, such a sad statement when it was when Solomon was old, his heart was turned away from the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord, having previously been really pleased with Solomon, um, because Solomon had asked for a heart that would discern good and evil to judge the people, the Lord was then angry with him and said he would tear his heart away. And some of the application we talked about last week was how we needed to love the Lord with our hearts, um, with fully with our hearts, and you know, to think about what were some of the things that might be turning our hearts away from the Lord. Mm, yeah, um, there was that, but also the fact that this happened when he was old. That's right. And if you remember, we talked about that we need to run the race, we need to um, continue going until the Lord calls us home and not to think that we've got it all sorted, and mm. but actually to be diligent and to remain faithful. Yeah, absolutely. And in our old age, um, to continue to walk that path uh, because Solomon clearly didn't when he got old. So we're going to pick up on page 12, um, but should we just pray before we get into our yeah. study? Lord, this is your word, and we have your Holy Spirit dwelling within us uh, to teach us, and we ask that you would do that now. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're on page 12 of the book. Uh, we're looking at Exodus chapter 20, uh, verses 1 to 6. We're going to read those verses. We're going to mark the Lord with a triangle. Uh, we're going to put a big I over all reference to idols and gods, and we're going to draw a heart over the word love. So hopefully you've got your pencil there, and uh, those are the things we're going to mark. So here we go, Exodus 20, verses 1 to 6, on page 12 in the book. Then God, God. spoke all these words, saying, I, I am the Lord, Lord your God, God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods. So that's the I on gods. Before me. Me, Mark triangling on God. You shall not make for yourself an idol, idol. or any likeness. Mm. Now I put an I over likeness yeah, because, so because that's referring to the idol, isn't it? Yeah. Or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them them is referring to the idols or serve them them for i the lord i that's the lord and your lord, god god mark that too am a jealous god god visiting the iniquity of the fathers top of page 13 on the children on the third and fourth generations of those who hate, hate me me so mark the me but showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me. So we're going to put a heart over the word love and triangle over me. And keep my commandments. My commandments, that's the Lord. All right, so first question, 
What did you learn about God in these verses? I think there's quite a lot, but I think let's not miss the obvious things, which is very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 says the Lord spoke. So we we know that God is a God who speaks. He's a communicating God, isn't he? Yeah. So we learn that he speaks, and also we see in verse 2 that he's a deliverer. He brought uh, Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery. Um, and then what do we learn about him in verses 3 and 4? Well, that he laid down some instructions for his people mm. uh, that they uh, there were to be no other gods before him he was to be their god the only god the yeah. number one the priority mm. and we see in verse five he describes himself as being a jealous god and that's a really interesting statement isn't it he, he's jealous and uh, it says that he visits the iniquity of the fathers on the children um, and he qualifies by, by that um, statement by saying, those who hate me. Yeah, because that can be, you can think, hang on a minute, what's going on there? Mm -hmm. when, when you read that verse 5, visiting, as you said, the iniquities of the, on, on the third and fourth generations. You know, isn't that unfair? But then at the end of the verse, it says, uh, of those who hate me. So um, that is a qualifying statement uh, regarding that. And showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me uh, and, and keep, keep my commandments. Yeah. So he shows yeah. loving kindness as well. Yeah. Um, so okay, so we are um, going to move on to the next question. List what you learned from marking references to idols. Mm. You've begun to answer that a little bit from verse 3, I think, yeah. in that it says very clearly that there should be no are the gods before me, that nothing should come um, before or in that relationship between God and mm. a man or man and God. Yeah. Not that, that also, not only that there should be no other gods, but there should be um, no likeness mm. either. Mm -hmm. Don't craft anything mm -hmm. that you could then worship. And you know, it reminds me of, uh, we've got some connections with people in India and recently been thinking about uh, friends over there and the Hindu religion we know I think they worship something like 300 million gods mm. and it's almost that anything can be a god you know mm. Jesus well then let's just add Jesus to all the other gods and, and it says uh, here don't make for yourself so these are man-made mm. so these are created by man and and it talks about things that are in heaven earth and under the earth um, so anything that you can see man turns into being a god and God warns us and says, you're not to do that. Yeah. Um, and then says, and this is where the jealousy bit comes in, in, in verse 5, then not to be worshipped or served. So idols can be worshipped and served. And if we do that, that provokes God to jealousy. Mm. Okay, if an idol is anything that moves God out of his rightful place, anything that you bow down to, give greater worth to, than you give to God, what would be some common idols in our culture um, and among your peers so there's a question i don't know what you wrote down for that i put me <laughs> myself i i think we, we're living in a society of of i come first it, it's my wants my needs my preferences so i think um yeah i can be an idol i can worship myself um or self actually um but there's also things like social media Television and film, cars, body beautiful, you know, there's the classic sex, drugs and alcohol. You know, there's, there are lots of different things that can come in the place of, of a God, of, of God. What would you suggest? I think the same. Um, shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, could be. Consumerism. Consumerism, yeah. materialism. Yeah. Latest phone comes out. I need the latest phone. Mm-hmm or iPad or, uh, well that's materialism really isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, television, I think uh, people watching a lot of television programs or Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, as you say social media can be an idol. I guess it's things that probably take our time and our money mm -hmm. <laughs> away from serving and worshipping God. So whatever we spend our money on. And I think the insight box here gives us quite a good um, summary of it. Um, shall I read that? Yeah, go for it. it says, idol worship does not necessarily mean we have a golden calf, which is what the Israelites had in the wilderness, or a wooden image on our mantle, uh, on a mantle place. 
uh, that we bow down to three times a day. An idol can be anything we put above our relationship with God or whatever steals our heart away. It can be money, power, relationships, anything we treasure above God. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 5, we read that greed is a form of idolatry. And actually, that's a really interesting point in society mm. today, isn't it? You know, our portions are just getting larger and larger and larger. And um, so that's greed of, of, of food, but there's greed, as you said, of wanting the latest gadget yeah. as well. Yeah. So lots of things. I thought you were looking at my stomach then. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wish to highlight that, then that's fine. I wouldn't be so bold. <laughs> okay. Actually, you did resist some cake yesterday, didn't you, in our Bible study? I tell you, I have to confess to you that that was, a, yes, every Thursday afternoon we have a staff Bible study. Uh, we're going through Hebrews at the moment, and uh, Sharon and Molly, they put out these biscuits, and uh, we have a chef that works close to us, and he made these beautiful cakes. And two of these things were put on the table in front of me. <laughs> and I said to Sharon, I mean, you I think, please take those off my table. Temptation. I do not want them in front of me. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, Here we go. what you have observed in your life and in others, in what ways do idols draw us away from God? Seek to smother our passion for God. In what ways? So I think I think I mentioned a couple of those, haven't I? Time. Things yeah, they things that take our time, that, that take, take time. our money. They could take our health actually as well, aren't they? Things that take away from us. Although I have to say, often idols have a real attraction to them, and there's kind of an immediate gratification, and um, and so you want that because it's going to feed that that immediate um, sort of need. need. Um, and they offer so much, and sometimes they deliver quite a lot too. <laughs> and, and this is the problem, isn't it? That and they become kind of addictive in a sense. Yeah, um, yeah I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. But yeah. then there's that regret that comes afterwards. Yeah, isn't there? So yeah, so it's interesting. I wonder what you would write down for that. Mm. Um, is anything in your life taking a priority over God? That is the question that we are asked at the bottom of page thirteen. Uh, would you consider it an idol? Why or why not? And I think you know that's an interesting question. Would you consider it an idol? Because we may we may fool ourselves and think, well, I'm doing this, or I'm spending my money on that. That's not really an idol. But if we step back and look at it objectively, maybe ask somebody else to ask us the question: you know, What do you spend your money on? Mm -hmm. How do you spend your time? Well, actually, I spend it doing this and doing this. And, and if somebody was to say to us, "Well, is that an idol in your life?" Our initial reaction would be. To Please, of course it's not. How dare course you not. accuse me of... But you know, there's that great verse, I've just looked it up in Psalm 139, uh, verses 23 and 24, and it says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. <laughs> Try me and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. And I think that's so, or such an amazing teaching, because as you said, sometimes we can't see it in our own lives, mm. and so we need to say to God, you search me, yeah. you show me. Very good. We can um, be blinded. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, all right, we're going to move on to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 to 20 on page 14. God is clear about his expectations for those who claim to follow him. Let's look at what God, through Moses, told his people Israel just before he took them into the promised land. So we're going to read Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 20. We're going to mark Lord with a triangle and all pronouns. And we're going to underline all the references to the Israelites, including you and your. And we're going to put a, a, a heart uh, over the word heart and love. Okay, okay I'll go. read it slowly because quite a few markings here. Hopefully you'll be able to follow along with us. Uh, so here we go. So Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. C. I, who's the I? The I is referring to the Lord God. So we've I have triangle. set before you. You, Israel, so underline that. Today. Life and prosperity, and death and adversity. In that, I, I the Lord, command you, you Israel, today to what? Love. Love the Lord your God. Did I put a heart over the love? Oh. And Lord, your. There's <laughs> lots of markings there. God. Okay, so I command you today to love the Lord your God. So almost all those words mm -hmm. are marked there. To walk in His ways. His. 
and to keep his, his commandments, commandments and his, his statutes and his, his judgments. Why? That you, you may live and multiply and that the Lord your God so the mark the Lord your God in the triangle may bless you, you in the land where you, you are entering to possess it. But, as they say, watch out for the buts in scripture. But if your, your heart, heart, so mark those two, turns away and you, you will not obey. So that's interesting. A mark of a heart turning away is not obeying. Not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I, the I Lord, declare to you today you, that you, you shall surely perish. Top of page 15. You, you will not prolong your days, your days in the land where you are crossing you, the Jordan to enter and possess it. I, the Lord, I call heaven and earth to witness against you, you today that I, I have set before you, you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you, you may live, you, you and your, your descendants. How? Verse 20. By loving the Lord, Lord your God. Your God. By obeying his, his voice and by holding fast to him. him. For this is your life and the length of your, your days, that you, you may live in the land which the Lord, Lord swore to your fathers, your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to give them. All right, so I think I'm going to read that through again. Okay, go for it. So I'm going to read through again with no marking because I just sit back and listen. So I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and statutes and judgments that you may live and multiply and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them... I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So, choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. By loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice and by holding fast to him, for this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to give them. And we could mark, do you think verse 20, where it says, by loving the Lord your God? I didn't mark that. I did. Did you? I didn't, why did I not mark that? Because you need to... Do you know, that is the real benefit of reading <laughs> it a second time, because sometimes you miss a marking the first time. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Go back and mark it if you All miss right. it. So, insight box. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the law, also known as the Torah. The idea behind the word Torah is to inform, instruct, and guide. So, first question. So, what do you learn from marking references to God? What choice was he offering? Verse 15, I think. He, he's, it really clearly shows us that the Lord is in control. He says, I've set before you today life. And prosperity, death, and adversity. So you know he holds life and death in his hands, so to speak. So God is in control. That's what we learn about him yeah. in verse 15. And then in 16, we see that he sets out commandments. We're going to look at that in a minute. Which we will look at in a minute. But yeah. these are commandments that they may receive blessings. Mm -hmm. So it's not, there's a purpose behind the commandment. Um, and uh, what about verse, what do we learn about the Lord in verse 17 or 18? Well, he, 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 there's the warnings that he lays. Mm -hmm. He lays down um, mm -hmm. so what, he will, warns. what will happen if, mm -hmm. if their hearts are turned away. Hearts are turned away. Mm -hmm. And uh, again in verse 19, really it's a reiteration of verse 15, setting before them mm -hmm. uh, life and death, blessing and a curse, and exhorting the people to choose life. And so we see that the Lord is really serious about his word, don't we? That um, in verse 
uh, 18 and 19, we see that he is going to ensure that his word is fulfilled. He says, today I declare that you shall surely perish. And uh, so he is serious about his word mm -hmm. and uh, he calls witness, heaven and earth to witness against them. So um, I think that's quite an important lesson that we learn actually, yeah. that yeah. we need to take his word seriously. And also I uh, just picked up that life is loving the Lord. Mm -hmm. Life is loving. Synonymous with the loving Lord. the Lord. You get life when you love the Lord. Yeah. Is that what well, you're saying? And that's what we see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think also, again, you've got to dig a little bit deeper here, but in verse 20, we see that um, the Lord makes some promises, and uh, we'll talk about that in just yeah. a second, but um, he says, which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. And, and I think this is talking about God being a covenant-keeping God. Mm. It's back to his word. Mm. He says that he's going to do something, and he does it. Mm. So we can have absolute confidence yeah. that God will come good with whatever he says From he's going to do. From one generation to the next. To the next, to the next. next. yeah. So okay. he's in control. Lots of interesting things about the Lord in this passage. So top of page 15, Moses gave three clear instructions for how God's people should live. I think it says God gave three, but that's okay. What did I say? You said Moses, but I suppose. No, Moses gave three clear ah, instructions. I've got God here. We've obviously... God should well, live. there you go. If you may have the version that says Moses, or you may have the version that says God, same thing, isn't it? There you go. All right. What are they? Hint, mm -hmm. look at verse 16. Number the instructions as you find them in the text. So let me read 16 and let's number them off. So okay. in that I command you today to do what? Number one. Love the Lord your God. Number two. To walk in his ways. And number three. To keep his commandments, statutes and judgments. So just write that down in your book, number one, number two, and number three. So you could sort of summarise it, Ruth. Love, walk and keep. Mm -hmm. L-W-K. Do you know, if we just did that, if we just loved the Lord, if we just walked in his ways, if we just kept his commandments, <laughs> that would be just so amazing. But hey... We'll come on to perhaps that later on in the book because we have a way of being able to do that, don't we? We, do. we have we the do. dwelling of the Holy so Spirit. So to love, to walk and to keep. So yeah. what evidence of spiritual passion mm. do we find in these verses? What precedes obeying God and holding fast to him? I think we see a passion that's described by being a heart that is God's, a heart that, that somebody that loves the Lord um, and that somebody that obeys him. We see that um, we see that mentioned in verse 16 and 17 and then verse 20. So I think evidence of spiritual passion is loving God and obeying him. Yeah. All right. In scripture, the word but indicates a contrast. What contrast is made in this passage? Now, you made reference to that when you were reading it the first time, verse 17. So you have a look and see what the contrast is um, being made. And I think it's about the, the contrast of love and blessings and obedience and life with perishing by turning your heart away. Um, so it's kind of like summarised in, I think, in verse, um, verse 15 and verse 19, actually. It's life or it's death. Mm. That's the contrast. Yeah. Love and obey equals life. Turn your heart away, disobey, disobey. death. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's quite black and white, isn't it? It is very black and white. And actually, I think th this is the, the truly wonderful thing, that God offers life to all people, but he respects man's decision, whether they're going to respond to him or not. And... Uh, so when we're sharing the good news about our faith, of our Lord and of the gospel with people, we don't know how people are going to respond, but we're to, we are to tell them about the life that God gives. Yeah. And uh, that life, of course, is Jesus. Mm. So we don't know how they're going to respond, but we just pray that they respond by obeying. Okay, mm. so we don't miss it. What did Moses say would draw God's people away from him? Have a look again, verse 17, it's this key verse, isn't it? I think it's, it's idolatry, it's um, worshipping other gods, it's anything that, that causes us to serve um, as a priority um, before we serve God. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, me. verse 17, your heart turning away. And that is evidenced <coughs> by not obeying God and his word mm. and worshipping other gods. So, yeah, so that's, that's 
the question is, how do you know, it's a sort of self-spiritual test, how do we know if my heart is turning away from God? Answer, am I obeying God? Am I worshipping other gods, serving other gods? My time, my money, all the things that we talked about before. What about my heart? Is my heart growing cold? How, how is it growing cold? Is it, am I preferring something else? Am I now doing something out of a duty mm. rather than because of I have a passion to do it? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so what are the consequences of our heart turning away from God? What does it look like when we turn towards him? Again, I think so we've talked about this, haven't we? We've said it's, it's um, what does it look like when we turn from God? It's, it's perishing, it's, it's death, um, it's adversity. But when we turn towards him, it's blessing, it's life, um, and it's... Length yeah, of, days, length in the of land. days in the land. And that was a specific promise, it wasn't it, was, to Israel? It was, yeah. But it's blessing. Yeah. Okay, so what do verses 19 and 20 say regarding those who choose to obey? And again, I think you probably... Yeah, I think we have. I think there's just one thing I want to perhaps mention that's at the end of verse 19. <coughs> excuse me. It says, so choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. So our choice is going to affect future generations. And that's really important. Mm. Um, but so those who obey, they have life and they inherit God's promises. Yeah. Okay, lots. Who says the Old Testament is not, not relevant, relevant for us today? No. Um, there are folks out there who would just want to listen to, read and be taught from the New Testament but as you can see as we go back to the Old Testament so um, much. written 3,000 years ago hmm? more than that more than that. three and a half thousand years yeah. ago yeah, um, parts of it were written less than that but because they went, I'm just thinking my timeline here uh, because Joshua took the people into the land in 1405 BC because mm. they were uh, in the desert from 1445 to 1405 BC. That's so the second reading of the law, Moses, Deuteronomy, happened just before they went into the promised mm -hmm. land. So that's 1405 mm -hmm. BC. So that's, that's three and a half thousand years ago. It's still relevant to today. This was written. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, so we're now going to move on to Mark chapter 12. Uh, let's jump ahead to the New Testament where Jesus referred to the Deuteronomy chapter 30 passage to answer a question from a scribe who was an expert in the law. So we're going to read Mark 12, verses 28 to 34. We're going to <coughs> underline Israel and all references to Israel. And we're going to put a heart over the word love. So Mark 12, 28 to 34, here we go. One of the scribes came and heard them arguing and recognising that he had answered them well, that's Jesus, asked him, what commandment is the foremost of all? Jesus answered, the foremost is, Hear, O Israel. Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And you, you that's Israel, shall what? Love. Put your heart over love. You shall love the Lord your God. Your God. With all your, your heart. With all your, your soul. With all your, your mind. And with all your, your strength. The second is this. You, you shall love, love your neighbour your as yourself. yourself. There is no other commandment, top of page 17, greater than these. The scribe said to him, Right, teacher, you have truly stated that he is one, and there is no one else besides him. And to love, love. him with all your heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength. And to love, love one's neighbour as himself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered intelligently, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one would venture to ask him any more questions. questions. Okay. All right, so discuss halfway down page 16. What did Jesus say was the foremost commandment? I think it's verse 29 and 30 here, and we're told to underline it, aren't we? So yeah. the commandment is, hear, O Israel. And I think that's the first part of the commandment, is to hear. And mm -hmm. this is the word in the original Hebrew that is called the Shema. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's not just to hear, it's to listen, it's to obey. So the commandment is to hear, 
to obey, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And this next part is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. So that all needs to be underlined. So yeah, we're asked to underline. So just underline um, from the foremost is all the way through to the end of verse 30. That so. is the first foremost commandment. Okay, the next question is, what was the second commandment? And underline that one too. Well, it helpfully tells us in verse 31, the second is this. Um, and so we need to underline, you shall love uh, your neighbour as yourself. Yeah. That is the second commandment. And this is the, um, the portion of scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 6 that the Jews put in what they call the mezuzah, which um, goes and so they put it by the side of their door, a little sort of um, scroll, and uh, it's to remind them as they come in and out of places. And uh, so you may have seen that. Yes. Um, if any of you have been to Israel or any uh, been there in hotels, you'll, you'll see those. Okay, so top of page 17. Reminder. What did you learn about love in this passage? Well, it's such an important reminder because it's told, it tells us that, that love really is a commitment to God first. It's a total commitment. It's a full, it's a passionate commitment. Uh, and it's a love for people second. So God first, people second. And it's not a maybe or an if or if you fancy. No, it's a commandment, isn't it's it? A, it? You shall mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. You shall do I mean, having been a military guy, you know, I recognise being... A command. A command when I see one. <laughs> so uh, it was not an optional thing. No. Uh, okay. It's next to get question. their priorities right, isn't it? Yeah. God first, people second. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. What helpful descriptions, if any, do you find regarding what it looks like to have a passion for God? I think it's a bit of a funny question, but perhaps I think it's in. The description in verse 33 uh, in as much as it says that we're to love God with all our heart with all our understanding with all our strength love our neighbors as, as himself so you are to love yourself but as yourself um, and it's much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices I think that's the helpful bit for me that it's not it's not just a ritual um, it's not just something to to do it's actually it's a passion from the heart so what yeah um so it's a heart, understanding, it's a mind, mm -hmm. strength. It's a physical thing. It's an yeah. emotion. So it's everything. It's Intellect. a whole body thing, Intellect. isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Love God with everything. To what degree are we to love God, we are asked? To what degree? To what degree? Can you see that again in verse 33? It's that repeti repetition of that little word, three letters, all, all, all. Uh, it's repeated, what, four times, I think. And also in verse 30 as well. Love the Lord your God mm -hmm. with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Mm -hmm. So is there anything about us or of us that we should not be loving God with? No. I think it's complete. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it doesn't, yeah, it is. It's complete. Yeah. So the That's last the question is, uh, how would following these commandments shape our daily choices? if we were to love God in this way. And that's what we call an application question, isn't it? Yeah. Again, it's something that um, we've understood what God is saying in this passage. Now we've got to apply it to our lives. And so um, how would you answer that question? What is it that you'd say? It'd be great to hear from you. Uh, I think that it would make me more like Jesus, I think is my kind of summary, that if I did that, I would be more like him. Um, and I guess this is why we study the Bible, this p very, very passage summarises why we study the Bible. It's not for knowledge, it's so that we can love God with everything that we have, everything that we are, and then we can love our neighbour as ourselves. And so sadly, I fall short of that so frequently. That, But if I were to do that consistently all the time, then I would be more like Jesus, I'd be more he said I only do what the father tells me to do mm -hmm. I and the father are one uh, and he demonstrated his love for people in the way that he behaved didn't he and ultimately um, through his death on the cross how would you answer that yeah I think you summed it up pretty well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said it would affect everything 
it would affect everything in the choices that I make um, that honor and glory would be brought to him and you know I'm just thinking of just recently being in a conversation with someone who um, I was actually talking to somebody else about what's going on with the ministry at the moment and I was really enthusiastic and passionate about that and these other two guys that I was with were responding very positively and then another person came along uh, into the conversation and he picked up when he picked up what we were talking about he was very anti mm. actually very anti and it took me by surprise really and I think I, I was thinking to myself did what I then say in that situation with this guy who was so anti actually bring glory to God did I step back and actually cower behind you know um, not not say what I needed to say and uh, I think the Lord was gracious at that particular time but if we are truly to honor him with everything then that's in all circumstances mm, everything you know, it's easy to honor him amongst Christians isn't it but actually when you go out into the world and but you, you need wisdom and, and discernment in the way that you communicate because you don't want to inflame you know Jesus talks about or, or I think it's Paul actually who talks about we need to respond in gentleness with an appropriate answer yeah. And so it's not all guns blazing all the time. We need that wisdom, that discernment, how we answer. And that can bring him glory. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so we are um, coming towards the end of our time. I think we should just wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. We'll just see if there are any questions in just a minute. Um, yeah. But it uh, be great to hear from you if, if there are any. And I think this just shows you that we've taken two programs to get through this particular uh, week's lesson. We could go faster, you can go faster in your small groups, and we'd really encourage you to, to meet with other people, start up a small Bible study group together, get discipling with other people, get some copies of these books, and um, meet together, because this is a brilliant way of just being able to be very informally around a, a cup of coffee, just to get to know God better. So um, you, you use the time that you've got available to study, and uh, we, we are spending a little bit longer uh, just because we think it's just so rich, there's so much in this. Mm. So there may uh, be folks out there you think we're probably going too fast. You can't keep up with the marking or the writing, uh, for which we apologise. We don't want to uh, put you off by doing that. But there are just so many stories of people that we know who have uh, not been able to study the Bible for themselves and then to pick up one of these books, to go through mm -hmm. it, and all of a sudden they hear God speaking to them. Mm -hmm. and their lives have changed and transformed. It is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little bit of while to get used to the marking and, and that, but there, there's, there are so many benefits to marking. I was just talking to somebody just this morning, going through a different one of these studies and explaining the benefits of marking. Uh, it's going to slow you down. Yeah, it, it helps concentrate because our minds are filled with all sorts of stuff, but actually if you've got to mark a word, you've got to read it carefully, you've got to concentrate what you're doing. Uh, all sorts of great benefits to marking. So it's a slightly different way of studying, but it is a great way to study, and we would just exhort you to continue to persevere and uh, allow the Lord to instruct you as you connect with him through his word. So, Actually, should we just ask, are there any questions, Sharon? No, there aren't any questions. Any comments or anything? Maybe just people checking in to say that they're watching. Brilliant. Well, thank you. Great to have you with us. Don't forget to share this. And uh, also, we always upload to YouTube the previous series, so you can watch the previous episodes. And people, if they don't have Facebook, they can go to our YouTube channel and uh, watch the previous um, playlists there. Anyway, so let's just do that. Okay, so I'm going to read the wrap it up on page 18. We will. Uh, we saw in our study time this week that our hearts can be drawn away from loving God when we allow anything or anyone to take precedence over him. In Matthew 6, 21, Jesus taught that where our treasure lies, our hearts will follow. Though Solomon initially found his treasure in the Lord, it seems as if as he grew older, he found his treasure in his wives and was therefore drawn to false gods. Like Solomon, so many believers have left their first love and they don't know it. They've given a portion of their hearts over to their own desires and the things of this world, mistakenly believing that they can serve both. Are you trying to make room in your heart for both the kingdom of God and the treasures of this world? It will never work out. God tells us he is a jealous God. He must be first. You can't be consumed with love and passion for Jesus Christ if you have a divided heart. The first step in moving forward is to confess to God that you've left your first love. Repent, have a change of mind, of heart, 
and tell God you want to love him with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Ask him to remove the idols that have crowded into your life and to kindle the fire of passion in your heart. And that's what this study is all about. So make sure you take time to do that, uh, just to pray and to seek the Lord over that. And you know, there are just a couple of other things we just wanted to say, didn't we, before yeah. we left um, today. There are a number of ways that you can continue to grow in your knowledge and love of the Lord through the ministry. Uh, we offer the Precept Bible School. You'll be able to get details from our website, precept.org.uk. There are courses running all the time. We would love to see you. There are more in-depth studies. They're over a period of three or four days. So please check those out. Go to our website and, uh, and connect with us that way. Um, the podcast, the nice little interviews, some incredibly interesting people, very ordinary people, but they've got incredible stories of God's faithfulness mm. and why they love the Bible. So check out the Bible and Me podcast. And then we've got rather an important event coming up at the end of uh, have. 2019, haven't uh, we? Well, on the 8th and 9th of November, the 8th of November is for uh, really those precept folks who are more connected, I say more connected with the ministry, leaders. It's a uh, sort of small, intimate uh, meeting with Kay Arthur over dinner. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then everybody's the welcome to come. On the Saturday, which is the 9th of November, uh, we, we took a bold decision this week, actually. We're going to offer a one day, a full day teaching in central London, uh, literally a stone's throw away from the House of Parliament in Westminster at a place called the Emmanuel Centre, a free conference to attend. Uh, and the main speaker will be the founder of, co-founder of Precept, uh, Mrs. K. Arthur. If you've not heard her uh, in person, it is something not to be missed. Uh, I think she's widely recognised, um, not just in the States, but around the world, as one of the Formal best Bible teachers. Bible teachers and uh, just incredible. We've also got a, an amazing worship leader to Sorry, yes, we have. As well. Yeah, Brenda, absolutely, you don't want to miss so that. So, qualified is the name, qualified, qualified. to run, to compete, to finish. Yeah. 9th of November, you can go to our website or to uh, pmuk.eventbrite.com, pmuk.eventbrite.com, and you can book uh, your tickets to come free on the Saturday, but we'd like you to register, please. Um, and there's a charge and for we, Friday yeah, evening. Yeah, we would exhort you to book early rather than later. Uh, as, as we have, people to book as we, have, uh, as we start to make it known that there's no charge, uh, then we are getting bookings every day for the conference. So if you don't want to be disappointed, we would really encourage you to come. And you know, it's just nine days after the new Brexit date. Uh, new Brexit date, 31st of October, conference 9th of November. Kay has a very prophetic voice. Uh, she's very sensitive to our culture to different cultures that she goes to speak in. And I'm sure she will have a very timely word for all of us related to that subject. So thank you so much for being with us today. Apologies about the, the phone ringing earlier. That's <laughs> my fault completely. I thought I turned it off, but um, thank you, Sharon, for doing that. Um, and we'll see you very soon. God bless you.